excited today to share with you one of our new acquisitions. It's called The Rest on the Flight into Egypt by a German artist named Hermann Kalbach. It's a 19th century painting and quite Honestly, we wish we knew a little bit more about the artist. He was best known for his genre painting, so paintings of kind of everyday rural life in the Alsace region of what is now Germany. However, he did do some religious paintings, and we're so fortunate and so excited to have one of those paintings now as part of our collection at the Museum of Art. So the painting, as I mentioned, is called The Rest on the Flight into Egypt. So this is a scene that we may not scripturally be as familiar with, and there's a reason for that. Only the Gospel of Matthew talks about the flight into Egypt, and it's a really short but important event in the early life of our Savior Jesus Christ. Matthew mentions that after the wise men go to visit Herod and then find the Christ child and worship him, that an angel comes to Joseph, the guardian of Jesus, in a dream and warns him that Herod will seek Jesus' life and that he needs to take Jesus and Mary quickly into Egypt. And there's just one verse that says that Joseph... And I admire his faith that he arose and he took Mary and Jesus in the night and departed into Egypt. That's really all we know. And it's an important tidbit and a fulfillment of prophecy that Christ does indeed go into Egypt and then later comes out of Egypt and again returns to the land of Israel, just as the Israelites have done in times past. So artists and writers and scriptorians have mused on this subject and wondered, as in this painting, what was their journey like? What would that have really been like to be asked, commanded in the middle of the night to leave your home and go into Egypt, having never been to Egypt, having maybe not enough time to prepare the food that you might need and all the supplies, but just to go. So it arose in earlier centuries, this idea that perhaps on the flight into Egypt, Mary, Joseph, and the Christ child were attended by angels, or maybe they were attended by well-meaning kind-hearted individuals as they traveled. And so it became popular to think about this idea of their rest, that they take sustenance in the midst of their harrowing or certainly long and arduous journey. And so here we have a scene like this depicted. And I want to just talk about some of the figures and how the artist has made this come to life and put a lot of humanity into this narrative. So you see here we have Mary seated on the donkey and she's holding the Christ child. Joseph stands at her side and then there are these young children attending them, offering them water in the desert landscape and it's very barren. You see this kind of nighttime sky. There's a little hint that there might be a dawn there on the horizon but it is certainly night and the only real light source which I think is just a beautiful detail comes from the young Jesus who sleeps in Mary's arms the light emanating from him he is their light in this journey of uncertainty though I imagine the spirit attended them it was a long and a very um, probably difficult journey for them so here Jesus emanating this light and he lights the face of Mary and it's interesting to look at Mary's countenance. She is definitely shown as being faint. She is weary. She's pale. And so I think the artist is imagining perhaps the emotions she's feeling and just the fatigue of, like we've said, such a journey. And she is um, the one to whom these children are offering water that she can take that. An interesting note as I was you know, researching this painting in these ideas, I was really struck by the way the artist had depicted Mary. And it's notable that in 
kind of the old church tradition, the Catholic tradition, there's something known as the seven sorrows of the Virgin, that Mary throughout her life fulfills Simeon's prophecy that she feels the pain and the burden of Christ's ministry herself in her heart. And this journey, the flight into Egypt, is considered in that tradition to be one of her seven sorrows. And so this depiction of a lot of um, perhaps suffering might fit into that tradition as well. I love this, uh, this depiction of Joseph. Joseph is typically shown as being older than Mary, and here Joseph stands by, loyal, almost protective, but with a very kindly look um, towards these children that are serving them in such a humble and gracious way. Oftentimes artists would imagine angels attending them, but in the 19th century, many European artists had a significant interest in the Holy Land and in Egypt and what those areas would have been like. They wanted to try and make scriptural scenes as authentic as they could, based on a 19th century understanding of these lands and peoples. And so here the artist has taken the idea of having children attend them. They are the humble ones that recognize something of divinity here. And he's painted them as kind of Egyptian children as they're traveling into this land. And they have a look of reverence, the eyes of this young boy just holding that water towards Mary. And the, the type of, of respect and the reverence shown there by these young, perceptive children. I also love the idea of the service of the donkey. The donkey is typically the animal that artists show um, the Holy Family traveling on to Egypt. And perhaps it ties in to this idea of when Jesus again returns to Jerusalem in that final week of his life. He rides the donkey. It's symbolic of the king returning as King David had. And so there's just that tie of this kind of humble animal, this donkey also in the service of divinity. And the last detail I wanted to point out is kind of directly above the head of the donkey. If we look straight up into the night sky, it's just a little detail, but I love the ideas it invites. There's a star up there, just one star in this night sky of Egypt. And I wonder if in the story of Christ's birth, the story of Christmas and all that goes with it, we often think of light and stars as being a symbol of guidance to the faithful, a reminder that God's hand was over the early events of the life of Christ. And so I love that star. Maybe there is a reminder that God is overseeing them. Maybe that's the guidance that they're following. But that presence, I think, invites just a wonderful um, set of ideas. For us, this painting was impressive artistically, and the concepts and ideas that come from it we found really compelling. And more than that, we thought that it's such a relevant subject matter for us today. We live in times of uncertainty, and it's a reminder, I think, to us that to all people, there are tests in life, there are uncertain times perhaps that we might be called to travel through, but that there can be purpose in it, and there absolutely will be divine guidance, and there will be light in the middle of that. And a reminder that Christ knows all of that. He experienced it from the very beginning of his days and that he also will be our light in the wilderness as we travel through our, these experiences in our own lives. So thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you'll come visit us and see this wonderful painting and others in person here at the Museum of Art.